on uh, the concept. This time we talk about impotence and premature ejaculation. Okay, so we will be focusing main, uh, we have learned that uh, for women, the normal menstrual cycle should be within the range of uh, 27 and 32 days. And um, here you could see the yang and yin components, okay? At the same time, you can also see the two phases of the menstrual cycle. So we have the heat phase followed by the damp heat phase. So um, you have the different uh, uh, characteristics of the phases, as uh, you can see from the figure. So it is clear that in the first half of the cycle, a woman loses a lot of blood and fluid. So after that, she would she is going to be dry. She's rather dry. Then her body temperature begins to rise because there is uh, depletion of yin. And the blood and yin in her reproductive organs also increase, but this time at a slower pace. Okay. Because of the rise in temperature, there is always an attempt of the yin to go up, okay? If you remember the rules. So this time, the body will have to make use of the blood and yin in the reproductive organs, but this time at a much slower pace. So at the sharpest rise of body temperature, ovulation will occur. In Tagalog, nangingitlog, no? Nago ovulate. From then on, the emphasis... So uh, it's on the endometrium. So uh, this thickens with the blood vessels and blood circulation. And this will have to secrete mucus to help the fertilized ovum uh, to travel. Okay. So the secretion of mucus by the endometrium will facilitate the travel of the fertilized ovum. And this will also provide the damp, nutritious place for the ovum to embed itself. The increased blood circulation and dampness of the second part of the cycle will also help to maintain and even increase some warmth in the body because the as the yin fuels the yang. But if this yin and blood does not continue to flourish, it would be impossible for the woman to remain healthily pregnant. So the heat is maintained by the blood and yin and together they nurture the pregnancy. Just as fire needs fuel to burn, if the blood and yin reduce, the fire of the kidneys will diminish too. So let's talk about impotence. Erection requires heat and libido, and this is a kidney yang aspect. If the kidney yang becomes deficient, the reproductive system loses desire, ability, and force. So when kidney yin is decreased, it loses endurance, stability, and life essence. As man is yang dominant, early aging, in this case, often begins with a deficiency of yin and will manifest as loss of head, hair, backache, high blood pressure, and stress. Impotence at this age is also due to kidney yin deficiency. These men are also easily exhausted, irritable, sleepless, and are poorly and uh, have many work, uh, the sleep is very poor. So they sleep less and they have poor sleep and they have many work-related worries. The older man has more time, he's more settled at work and home, but he has lost yin, yang, blood and chi during his life and has problems achieving and maintaining an erection. The fact that his partner would be trying to cope with her menopause does not help it either. All in all, tonifying the yin and yang of the kidneys is very helpful in the treatment of impotence. But it is also important to make time for rest and play. It is easier to hold on to one's youth, um, but once you lose it, it's not so easy to win it back. <laughs> so kidney essence is difficult. As early as now, you should endeavor to look young, okay? 
uh, there is no point of trying to look young if you already look old. So kidney essence is difficult to build up again, but easier to retain. Patients often seem to believe that every part of the body should function at our will, no matter how we feel emotionally or how we abuse our energy. Impotence could be also an early signal for diseases like diabetes or hypertension, and relevant investigations may be helpful. Now let's go to premature ejaculation. This is a condition of leakage from the kidneys. So there is yin, yang, and chi deficiency, where the kidney cannot control the point of release. So again, it is quite successful to treat premature ejaculation. When we treat any deficiency of the reproductive system, we have to use tonification points. And if necessary, the mother organ needs to be tonified too. So the mother element of the reproductive kidney and urinary bladder is earth. When tonifying the kidney yang, then we need to tonify the stomach, which is a young organ. When tonifying the kidney yin, we tonify the yin organ, the spleen. It is also necessary to use diet, color, and environmental energies to help to improve the energy and consolidate the effect of tonification. Treatment for impotence and infertility. So what are the points for both yin and yang tonification of the kidney? We have REN3, we have two needle and moxa, and stomach 29. So these are the local points. Then we also use an area distal point, which is spleen 6, and uh, kidney 3, which is the earth point, which tonifies the yang, will be alternated with kidney 7, which is also a tonification point. Bladder 23, bladder 28, the back shoe points tonify the kidney, the urinary bladder yang. Bladder 67, moxa, tonification point tonifies the yang. Stomach 36, the earth point or the house element point tonifies the yang of the mother organ. So treatment sessions, for premature ejaculation, minimum of three times a week or four times a weekly would be, so four times a week would be ideal, 10 sessions per course. So there will be a rest of three months. Okay, so the course can be repeated after three months. Warm and cooked food, including the feet of animals like chicken legs, pigs, trotters, and fish, all kinds, especially small fish with bones, because there's a lot of movement there. There's a lot of yang. And keeping the lower part of the body warm will help. Stagnation of dampness in the reproductive system leads to tendency towards tumors and hypertrophy. Ovarian tumor, fibromyoma of the uterus, hypertrophy of the prostate are examples. Ovarian tumor is associated with the kidney and both uterine fibroids and hypertrophy of the prostate are associated with the urinary bladder. The dampness generated by the spleen attacks and stagnates at the reproductive organs because they have a functional or chi deficiency. It therefore becomes necessary to treat both elements. Okay, so we treat both the earth yeah, and the uh, yeah, the spleen dump. So here you could see the spleen dampness, then the kidney and the urinary bladder. So as much as possible, we need to uh, tonify our spleen. And I think the reason why we see a rise in cases of uh, ovarian tumor and uterine fibroids plus prostate hyper prostatic hypertrophy is because many people are or many men and women are ignorant about uh, dampness in their tongues, okay? So let's start educating people about the importance of actually uh, looking at our tongues, okay? Let's talk about ovarian cysts. When not too large, they're very effective to treat. The size of the ovarian cyst tends to vary during different periods of the menstrual cycle. So these are also sensitive to treatment, and they respond quickly and favorably. So if uh, you have small cysts, 
too small to be felt by abdominal palpation, you only moxa REN3. So very simple. For large cysts, large cysts means there is a discernible lump on abdominal palpation. So we do electrostimulation. So the diagram will show us how two needles are connected to one outlet of the electrical stimulator. So these two needles should be along one meridian. So in this case, the stomach meridian. If the cyst is larger, there can be two more needles on the spleen meridian. So this is another meridian. They are stimulated continuously at 10 hertz for 20 minutes. So bladder 28 with the first needle and then dry copying, bladder 23, uh, box two points of the urinary bladder kidney. So spleen six, area distal point, bladder 58, luo point to sedate the yin and tonify the yang in the kidney and urinary bladder. And stomach 40, luo point to circulate dampness in the spleen. The ear, we have the ovaries. Uh, this is uh, for ear acupuncture. You needle the ovaries, the triple warmer to circulate the dampness, the kidney and the spleen. Two sessions a week for 14 sessions make up a course. Improvement continues after the treatment is stopped. Another course may be given two to three months later if necessary. Now let's talk about uterine fibroids and prostate hypertrophy. So treatment is similar as the imbalance is the same and the local area is similar. So we could see from here that um, the prostate hypertrophy is the counterpart the male counterpart of the uterine fibroids in women. Some points can be added or removed according to special symptoms like excessive uterine bleeding. So rentry moxa, the front mu point of the bladder, mild moxa for two to three minutes, stop before the skin changes to red color. Stomach 29, local point, bladder 23 and 28, the back shoe points of the kidney and urinary bladder, Back 28 with needle, then dry copying. And then we use spilling 6, the area distal point, the luo point, bladder 58 to sedate the yin and tonify the yang, stomach 40 to circulate the dampness, another luo point, bladder 39, the lower C point of the triple warmer to circulate the dampness. And for ear acupuncture, we have uterus, urinary bladder, triple warmer, and the spleen. In case of uterine fibroids with excessive bleeding, there may be blood stagnation in the uterus, either with or without damp stagnation. So the following points can be added. Spleen 1, moxa only, because this is a very pain painful point. So this is a wood point and grandmother point. Tonifies the yang and helps the spleen to hold the blood within vessels. And a luo point of the liver, which is liver 5, to tonify the liver yin and sedate the yang. The yin of the liver stores blood and yang releases it. So for hypertrophy of the prostate, or BPH we call it, benign prostatic hypertrophy with urinary problems, these are mainly slow urination with the rest remaining in the bladder and increased nocturnal urination. So points, aside from the ones mentioned above, Kidney 3, which is an earth point to tonify the yang. Paravertebral tapping of the sacrum in the direction from lumbar 4 towards sacrum 4. About 1 cm lateral to the center until a red skin reaction is seen. And advice against drinking beer, coffee, or tea in the evenings. So